Welcome everyone, I'm Martin Pompré, a managing partner with Infomanio. Infomanio is a research firm offering offshore services from Northern Africa and specialized on doing research on Africa and the Middle East. For our own needs, we wanted to understand where the multinational organizations were setting up their regional headquarters for covering Africa and the Middle East. In fact, we wanted to know where to approach them and how to develop our uh, offices for covering the region. We thought the results of this study were quite interesting and developed a presentation. We have the pleasure to share with this presentation with you today. Infomania study is called Organizing for the Middle East and Africa, a study of how the top 500 multinational companies set up regional hubs for Africa. It was released in July 2015. Our objective for this study uh, was to understand what the level of maturity of top multinationals regarding the coverage of Middle East and Africa was. Do they have an organization dedicated for the region? Don't they have an organization dedicated to the region? When they were in the region, where did they set up their regional offices? And how did they enter Africa and the Middle East? In terms of methodology, we looked at the Fortune 500 ranking, so the top 500 companies uh, in the world according to Fortune magazine. We looked at their companies' annual reports, companies' websites, uh, Forbes, we did press search, we did LinkedIn search to try and evidence where they had regional headquarters. This is not science, it's judgment. So please bear with us that not every single data point is exact, but we trust that the quality of the research is, is good enough for all the conclusions that we take out of this research. We analyze basically two things. One, the maturity of the companies, and second, the cities in which they are established. In terms of the maturity of the companies, there are five different levels. The first level was companies that had no organization called Africa, Middle East, Sub-Saharan Africa or anything. It's not meaning that they don't have an activity in Africa, it just means that they don't have an organization for Africa. Second, we have companies that cover Africa from, and, and the Middle East from outside of the region. They would have a regional headquarters for the Middle East and Africa in Paris, in New York, Brussels, Singapore, or, or something else. Third level, if they have a first foot into Africa, they have one office in a region. You'll see that it's often Dubai, um, and, and they don't have a very granular approach. And they have one office for roughly 70 countries, meaning the level of investment is not very strong. Um, and then there are companies that have more than one office. For example, they have one office for Middle East and Africa in Dubai and one office for Sub-Saharan Africa in uh, Johannesburg. And finally, there are these most advanced companies which have several offices, one from Northern Africa in Casablanca, one from Sub-Saharan Africa in, in Johannesburg and uh, one from Eastern Africa in, uh, in Nairobi. Second, we look at the cities that were um, you know, getting the most of the headquarters. In total, you'll see that we identified 303 of these headquarters and we, we basically mapped where these headquarters uh, were and we were able to rank the cities in terms of how much um, they get from, from uh, the companies. So, key learnings. Out of these 500 global companies that we studied, only one third have an entity serving all of part of the region. To be frank, that's something that surprised us. We were assuming that this figure would be slightly higher than that. You'll see that it really depends on the industries of the companies and their uh, region of origin. Second learning. Clearly, Dubai is the hub for covering Africa and the Middle East. Almost half of all the entities were identified are in Dubai. The second city is Johannesburg, and then follows Nairobi, and then a league of uh, second-tier cities, which are fast-growing, we believe, but still are lagging behind. Interesting point, we were assuming that more companies would be covering Africa and the Middle East from outside of the region, from Europe. This number is quite limited, so those that do have an organization for Africa and the Middle East 
tend to have it in the region and not outside of the region. In terms of the sub-regions, of course, the Middle East is covered from Dubai. Southern Africa is almost 100% of the time covered from Johannesburg. The hub for Eastern Africa is Nairobi, uh, there's no doubt. Western Africa is covered from three cities, Lagos, Abidjan and uh, Casablanca. Northern Africa is not often covered as a standalone region. It's often covered within the Middle East and Northern Africa, MENA region, then it's covered from Dubai. Sometimes it's also covered from Casablanca as a standalone region. Finally, Central Africa, with countries like Cameroon, is not covered as such. It often belongs to Eastern, Western or Southern Africa. Final learning of our study, how to enter Africa. It seems there is a, a path which is quite clear. Um, companies start from their global headquarters. Their first step is to move into Dubai. Second step would be to move into Africa, either directly going to the sub-regions or going to Johannesburg first before moving to the other regions. Let's go into the details now. In terms of maturity, 333, exactly two-thirds of our sample, do not have an organization dedicated for Africa and the Middle East. Again, please bear with us. It does not mean they don't have activity in Africa and the Middle East. It just means they're not organized with a de dedicated entity for Africa and the Middle East. Second, only 4% of the companies cover Africa and the Middle East from outside of the region. Third, 11% of the total sample have only one entity. This is a majority of the companies that cover Africa and the Middle East do it with only uh, one entity. 10 more percent have one headquarter for Middle East or Middle East and Africa and one for Africa, meaning they have a second foot into the continent or into the region with one in Africa. And finally, only 42 companies, meaning 8% of our sample, have you know, a more in-depth um, uh, footprint in the region with several uh, regional and sub-regional headquarters. In terms of the industries, um, two industries are more advanced than the others. Um, these are IT and telecom and consumer goods. Um, they have a better footprint in the region uh, compared to others and they're more advanced. Some others are really lagging behind, like mining and metals. Even though mining is a big industry in Africa, uh, it tends to be much more operational entities as opposed to regional headquarters. In terms of the countries of origin, um, China is clearly doing a lot of business in Africa, but they don't get organized for Africa and they cover the region uh, from China for the most part. And not really surprising, uh, French companies and British companies have a quite strong footprint into the region, whereas uh, American companies are a little lagging behind France and the UK. So if we take our overall lead, 303 headquarters identified in the region. Clearly, Dubai has 46% market share. Then. Johannesburg is following with 15%, uh, sorry, and, and, and third comes Nairobi, and, and then we have Casablanca and Lagos emerging, together with Abu Dhabi in the shadow of, of Dubai. So it's, it's an uncontested game, and with a clear leader, it probably does not mean that going forward this figure will, re will remain the same. We expect that the market share of Dubai will reduce, by companies going more and more into Africa, but we'll get back to that later. Regarding Middle East and Africa, meaning the global headquarter for the whole of the region, um, it's even more uh, of Dubai with 56% uh, of uh, the total region. So many companies cover Africa from the Middle East, but not a single company's, uh, a company covers the Middle East from Africa. When we look at the Middle East itself, Again, Dubai is very clear, then uh, follows with Abu Dhabi, uh, Manama has one and Cairo has one. Cairo has a history of having regional headquarters, but due to the uh, recent events in the countries, uh, many companies have uh, flown out of the country 
uh, given the stability that is coming back to the country, um, we might expect that some return to Cairo. In terms of covering Africa specifically, um, Johannesburg is clearly the leader. And here, Paris comes second. Uh, quite a large number of French companies still cover uh, Africa from Paris uh, in, in, different, in different fields. Then a few companies have made the choice to cover Africa from Nairobi, which is quite interesting. Nairobi has a very strong positioning in terms of IT and technology. And even a few have an entity based in Dubai called Africa. It's not in Africa, but it's in Dubai. And it's probably linked to the fact that the standards of living for expats is very good in Africa, in Dubai, um, and, and some, some expats might uh, rather be in Dubai as opposed to be uh, on, on the ground in Africa. Then on the regional hubs within Africa, um, on the right hand side of the slide you can see Sub-Saharan Africa. It's a definition that a few companies have. Um, clearly Johannesburg is a leader here. Then if you look at the left hand side of the slide, you see that from, for Southern Africa, there is virtually no competition. Johannesburg is, is, is a leader. Uh, the second area where it's a clear cut is Eastern Africa. Nairobi is clearly the leader, um, and some still cover Eastern Africa from Johannesburg, but Nairobi is clearly emerging. Then there's more competition for other regions. Northern Africa is often covered from Dubai, uh, with, within the Middle East and Africa uh, and Northern Africa region, but Casablanca is clearly emerging as a regional hub, and due to the political events, mostly in Tunisia, um, there is not a lot of competition left uh, for Casablanca in the region, which is really emerging and having an uh, aggressive policy in terms of attracting uh, regional headquarters. Western Africa is an interesting case. Uh, it's heavily disputed between Casablanca, who, who has a claim of covering Northern Africa and Western Africa, mostly with the logic of French-speaking Western Africa, uh, and Lagos, which is a city which is clearly the leading economy within the leading economy in Africa, uh, but where the quality of life, the level of security can be a challenge, and that way it really slows down the development of Lagos in terms of being a regional uh, hub. Accra in, in Nigeria is an alternative, but few companies have chosen uh, to go in Accra instead of Lagos. There was a the famous example of Nestle, for example, being in, Lagra, uh, in, in Accra and not in Lagos. And Abidjan, um, given that the political situation is better now, is returning in the game, um, offering a sound alternative to, um, to Casablanca and Lagos. Finally, uh, Central Africa, I discussed earlier, is not a region that is defined as a hub for itself and is you know, either covered from Eastern Africa, Western Africa, uh, or Southern Africa. In terms of the country of origin and where the companies are um, basically establishing headquarters, um, I let you take a deeper look at this slide. Um, not very surprisingly, um, um, French companies tend to cover Africa from Paris and Casablanca more than they would from other locations. And here you have some cultural heritage uh, with the UK, focus on English-speaking Africa, uh, uh, etc. By industry, um, again, it's interesting. Uh, one of the key insights is Nairobi uh, being very um, advanced in terms of IT and telecom. It really was able to position itself as a hub for IT and telecom. It's even ahead of Johannesburg and Dubai uh, in terms of, of this sector, which is quite interesting. And healthcare is not too bad for Nairobi as well, same as, as consumer goods. Uh, but on the other sectors, Johannesburg is often uh, the leader as it is across the board, uh, together again with, with Dubai. So as a conclusion to this, to this study, we can see um, two paths for entering Africa. Um, the most common seems to be a company starts from Paris, Brussels, uh, Beijing and, um, and New York or Washington, goes into Dubai as a first step. 
as a second step, the company would say, okay, we have to go deeper in the region and the reality in, in Africa is not the same as it is in Dubai. Let's go to Johannesburg. And then the third move they're doing is going from Johannesburg and adding to Johannesburg, not replacing Johannesburg, adding Nairobi, Lagos and Casablanca. The alternative um, is to go a little faster than that, go to Dubai and then directly go to the let's, what we call sub-regional hubs of Northern Africa, Eastern Africa, Western Africa and Southern Africa. We hope you enjoyed the presentation today um, and we'll be looking forward to hearing from you. You can contact us uh, via email, via telephone or um, by visiting our website and we'd be happy to be in touch in the future. Thank you very much.